Thanks for joining us for the first episode of The London Critics with me, Maximilian, and my identical twin brother, Ed. Ed? Ed? Has anybody seen Ed? Okay, we'll have to do this again. Worry not, Max. I'm here. Where have you been? Theatrical research. Anyway, let's carry on with the show. What have you done to your hair? I thought as we look the same and sound the same, I would shave my head so that people could tell the difference between us. Anyway, this week we've been to see Betty and Joan, The Final Curtain, at the St James Theatre. What did you think? I couldn't make it. I had a barber's appointment. So this discussion's going to be a bit one-sided. Don't worry, I'll monologue it. And then I'll do my art show at Blaine Southern. Betty Davis was a funny woman. After the death of her great rival, Joan Crawford, she is quoted as saying, You should only say good of the dead. Joan Crawford is dead. Good. Some of her witticisms have been included in Betty and Joan, The Final Curtain, a devised theatre piece at the St James Theatre. It stars Sarah Tom as Betty Davis and Sarah Toogood as Joan Crawford. Much affection is obvious in the portrayals of these two stars of Hollywood's golden age, renowned for their mutual dislike and feuding. From Davis's deathbed in 1989, we see flashbacks to her interactions with Crawford and witness their feisty relationship. But there's a lot of squabbling, and even though Davis jokes and Crawford dances, it is a sad portrayal of lives which have descended into unhappiness and loneliness. Next time we should move the sofa over so that London critic sign is readable. I don't know if there's going to be another time. Ooh. Well, this week we've also been to the cinema to see Erebus into the unknown. A film about disaster, trauma and cover-up in Antarctica. What did you think, Maximilian? In 1979, an Air New Zealand plane had gone missing in November during a sightseeing flight over Antarctica. The fate of the 257 passengers was soon discovered. The plane had flown directly into Mount Erebus, the highest mountain in Antarctica. With winter approaching, a team of ill-trained and badly equipped policemen was dispatched from Auckland to bring the bodies back. Directed by Charlotte Purdy, This docudrama combines reconstructions with archive footage, photographs and interviews with those involved. But there is also the suggestion that Air New Zealand was involved in a cover-up to shore up their reputation. Erebus is only 67 minutes long and could have spent longer investigating this aspect. Was the cause of the accident pilot error or had the crew been given faulty information? The first thing that hits you in Blaine Southern's new group show as long as you've made it intact through the heavy door, is the annoying high-pitched whir of a detuned TV set. Room 1 of Refraction, the Image of Sense, is overwhelmed by a 1973 piece from Bill Viola that deliberately ruins the contemplative gallery atmosphere and makes you appreciate afresh the occasional few seconds of silence. The show brings together artists interested in new media and examining the networked society that we live in. Curated by Peter J. Amdam, This is the sort of exhibition where a girl sitting next to the wall tapping on a tablet might be a gallery assistant, but could also be one of the works. Michael Manning's Pineapple and Red Cabbage Coleslaw is another electronic piece, a large, slowly changing electronic painting, or a large-scale abstract screensaver in neon colours. It's not a show to worry if you miss. Thank you for watching. See you next week and I'll be casting our eyes over some more of the cultural events of London. Bye. Goodbye. Well, I think that went rather well. I just need to make sure I'm looking at the right camera. And I'm going to try and turn up on time next week. Excellent. Is that camera still on?